Hello everyone, my name is Thijs van den Haas. I'm a research engineer at SIDN, which is the registry of top-level domain .nl for the Netherlands. I will present our paper on Logomotive, which is the tool that we build to help identify online abuse using logo detection. First I will introduce the problem that we tackle, then I will explain how our system works, I will describe how we evaluated our system in two pilots and the insights that we obtained from those pilots, and I will wrap up the presentation with how we plan to use Logomotive in production and our considerations for future research. Logos are often used on websites to increase the recognizability of a brand or organization and to instill trust in the visitors of a website. Scammers uh, can abuse this fact by placing well-known logos from renowned institutions on their malicious websites and with that mislead their visitors. Think of phishing websites that use the logo of the government or of a bank and fake web shops using a certified trust mark which they're not allowed to use. In our paper, we research if we can find malicious websites by detecting logos on .nl websites. And here, the detected logos on these screenshots are shown with a bounding box and their confidence, so how confident the model is about its detection. Now, how does our system work? We start with a list of .nl domain names, and this can be the entire zone file with all domain names or a list of recently registered domain names, for example. Uh, we then use our crawler to automatically visit those domain names and take a screenshot of their homepage. Uh, next, we apply a deep learning object detection model called YOLO to detect the logos that we're interested in on those screenshots. Uh, YOLO stands for You Only Look Once, and it's a machine learning model used to detect objects on images. Uh, we chose YOLO because it's fast, uh, it can detect logos on 50 screenshots per second, and we can easily retrain the model to support more logos. Now, when a logo is found, we upload the results to an online dashboard on which abuse analysts can determine whether the logo is used legitimately or with malicious intentions. And we deliberately chose a human-in-the-loop approach, so our algorithm does not decide by itself uh, whether a domain name is malicious or not. That is a human decision. We can easily train our logo detection model to support more logos because we automatically generate the data on which our model is trained. We take a lot of random screenshots of random .nl domain names and add the logos that we want to detect on top of them uh, in random locations with uh, random alterations like blurriness, size, opacity and more. Uh, you can see some examples there on the right. Uh, and by doing this we can create a practically infinite data set with the logos that we want to detect and simply regenerate this training data and retrain the model when we wish to detect uh, another logo. So by using YOLO as our logo detection algorithm, Logomotive remains flexible and it allows us to expand it with more logos because we do not need training data uh, manually annotated by human experts, which would take uh, way too long to get a data, size, a data set that's large enough. Now we evaluated our system in two pilots with two distinguished organizations in the Dutch internet landscape, the Dutch national government and the biggest certified webshop trust mark in, in the Netherlands. Uh, in both pilots, we scanned the entire .nl zone, consisting of over 6.2 million domain names, multiple times, uh, with the goal of identifying abuse. In a pilot with the national government, we also monitored newly registered domain names for two months uh, to see if we find something different there. In total, we found about 11,700 domain names uh, on which the government logo is shown on the website, and 10,600 domain names with the webshop trust mark. And on the right you can see that even small and tilted logos are successfully detected. Uh, abuse analysts at both organizations have manually annotated all these domain names with the labels malicious or legitimate uh, or any other label they want, which has uh, allowed us to write a measurement paper about it. Now briefly about the performance of the model. The recall of a model is the fraction of all logos that our system actually detects. Now we cannot compute the recall in the entire .nl zone because we don't have ground truth for all .nl websites. We don't know for each website whether or not it contains a logo. So we made a data set on which we can compute the recall of our model. Uh, it consists of 3,700 domain names, a mix of government domains, uh, members of the webshop trust mark and random .nl domain names. Uh, and we manually annotated all of these uh, and with that we have a ground truth data set. Uh, with our chosen confidence threshold of 80%, uh, we see a recall of 97 to 99%. So that's the fraction of websites with a logo that our system actually detects. We can summarize the findings of our research in three insights that we obtained. 
Our first contribution is that we show that logo detection can help us find malicious websites from a new perspective. Uh, second, we found that Logomotive can reveal potential spear phishing attempts and other dormant risks. And our third insight is that logo detection can help complete the domain name portfolios of organizations. Firstly, and most importantly, logo detection can be used to find malicious websites. In the first crawl of the entire .nl zone, uh, Logomotive found three phishing websites uh, that abused the government's logo and 208 domain names with a web shop that tr showed a tr the certified trust mark uh, while they're not authorized to. And we're looking at newly registered domain names in the first two weeks after their registration, uh, which is the first table, the second column, uh, we see another 53 domain names with the government logo, of which again three are phishing websites. So this means that uh, phishing sites using the government's logo are taken offline quickly, because we don't find that many in the entire zone, uh, and that recently registered domain names uh, are more likely to contain malicious content. So we can use logo detection to find malicious websites quickly, before they are reported by uh, any victim, or to find abuse that is normally not detected, like the misuse of a trust mark. And as you can see in the first rows of both tables, uh, we obtain a precision of 90% for the government logo and 99% for the trust mark logo. A precision indicates how often the model is correct when it detects a logo, so how often it actually is a logo. Uh, and it differs uh, because one logo is more difficult to detect than others. Our second finding was that Logomotive found 82 suspicious redirects to legitimate government websites. Uh, the domain names are often typo squatted, so they look like the legitimate domain name, but the owner of this domain name has no connection at all to the government. So they could be building a reputation uh, with their redirect to a legitimate website, and later on decide to host malicious content on that domain name. And in two extreme cases, the domain name redirected to the website of a specialized branch of the government, including a login portal for employees. And this could indicate a spear phishing attempt, where the scammer is targeting specific government agencies or employees. We also found MX records in the DNS that point to suspicious mail servers, so they could be using the domain to send malicious emails. And these domain names are a dormant risk, because they're not yet completely malicious, so they're not on any block list. Uh, and in the case of spear phishing, they're often not reported at all before it's too late. So we can apply logo detection to get a proactive edge over these potential scammers uh, by keeping an eye on their suspicious domain names. Finally, we found that a logo detection can be used to unveil legitimate domains that are not yet in an organization's website portfolio. Uh, the Dutch national government has a domain name register, which they use to monitor their websites on security and modern internet standards like DNSSEC and DMARC. Uh, during the pilot, we found 318 legitimate government domain names that were unknown to our contacts and not in their uh, domain name portfolio. This means that they could not monitor those domains on security standards. Now, to test the effect of such a domain name portfolio, we looked at the implementation of DNSSEC and DMARC in government domain names. And we found quite a noticeable difference. Uh, for the previously known domain names, 98% uses DNSSEC and 92% uses DMARC, uh, while for the unknown domain names that Logomotive found, 74% uses DNSSEC and only 41% use DMARC. We also found 54 domain names uh, that belong to members of the Certified Webshop Trust Mark, but that were not named on their certificates, so the organization could not monitor them on their rules and guidelines like the availability of valid TLS certificates uh, and specific payment uh, methods, for example. Now to conclude, our pilot partners were very positive about the outcome of our research and found the insights very helpful. So from the pilots we've learned that logo detection definitely has an added value in the fight against domain name abuse. We found malicious websites, suspicious domain names among which possible spear phishing attempts, uh, and we found domain names that could previously not be monitored on security standards. So as a next step, we will implement our logo detection system in our existing domain name abuse service called SIDM BrandGuard. We will also make the source code of Logomotive available to academics that are interested in doing follow-up research, uh, and we will actively promote its use by other top-level domain registries. Future work includes the automatic prioritization of results, such that abuse analysts at the Logos organization can first investigate the most suspicious domain names, and we would like to look deeper into the website than just the homepage, even though that's where most Logos are likely to be found. 
Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them or send us an email.